Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. There's a real buzz in the air. The dealers today are Mark. He's a wheeler dealer from Brighton, and he's a big hitter. 500. I haven't finished yet. OK, then. Give me a smile, I'll put a bit more yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got Ian. Well, you know Ian. How much more do you think it's worth? Well, you keep putting it down and we'll tell you. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> then the ladies, we have got Karen. She knows this business inside out. Watch it, fellas. £100. That's shut you up, didn't it? Yeah. You didn't know I was going to be able to shut you up today, and yeah. I've shut you up. Yeah, you have. Then we have Cheryl. She's an elegant lady, but I often have to remind her, Cheryl, come on, get some more money down, girl. What's on the table? 450. Then 550. <laughs> I am generous. <laughs> Today the show comes to you from Edgebaston in Birmingham. Look at the crowd. Are they going to take the cash? Are they going to gamble and go to auction? I don't know. But one thing I know for sure, everybody wants the real deal. Let's head straight to Karen Delmeny's table, where father Jeffrey. and son team Andrew and, and Andrew. Jeffrey have brought in an interesting silver box. Andrew is deaf and Jeffrey signs and translates for him. So, how much are you looking for, guys? We want, we want about 120, 150. So, welcome. Yeah? Now, what have you bought me today? We've bought, um, from about 70 years ago, his my dad's um, grandfather's old little perfume box that he had from his wife. Perfume box? Yeah. You think it's a perfume box? No, well, that's what he thinks. Yeah? He I, I think it's probably a little snuff box. It's an old snuff box. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, now, your dad, Andrew, you've been deaf from, from birth, haven't deaf you? Deaf from birth, yeah. 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 And, and is this not something, Andrew, that you'd like to pass on to Geoffrey here? No. I mean, I, he has, we have talked about many things like he's had and what about that, but I don't really see use of it. I mean, so you'd rather see a little bit of dusting at the yes, moment, would you? Yes, he would see as well. Well, let's have a look yes. at the object that you brought in. It's a rather beautiful case. Yes. It's got wonderful engraving here, mm -hmm. and we've got this lovely lion, and he's got his front paw resting when yes. you look quite closely yeah. on a book. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if we open it up. We've got gilding on the inside here, and the gilding on the silver is always to protect the silver from yes. whatever is being put inside yes. the box. Um, and I can just see from here, and I'll look at it quite closely, there's a mark on there, and I'm sure, Geoffrey, you're very switched on boy, you'd have had a look yourself, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, but it's very small, isn't it? OK, let's yes. double check, shall we? It has the numbers 800 and then a continental mark just to the right of it. Mm. Now, that number 800 tells me something straight away because our standard sterling silver is what they call 925, yes. which is 925 parts per thousand. Mm -hmm. This has got 800, yes. so obviously it's slightly lower content of silver with other metals added to it to give it the strength. Yeah. So that's what we call a low-grade silver. <laughs> but it's still a lovely object yes, and is. still something I'd like to buy. Yes. So who's going to get the money? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> who's going to try and get the money? <laughs> Hopefully me. <laughs> <laughs> right, Andrew, I'll, do, I'll direct this at you, but, Geoffrey, you can... I right. I'm going to put some money down. And we'll see where we go. OK. Right. 20, 40, 60... No. 80. No. Oh, what? don't like this bit. You can take this bit back, Geoffrey. No. I take I'm it back. that's a no inside, is yes. it? Yes. <laughs> no, I can't. Is that a no off you, Andrew? No, he's no. He wants more. More Well, I don't think it's going to be a lot more. There's another tenner. 
no. I'm getting the old no again, aren't no, I? I'm no. worried about this. David, so, help me. Can you read my lips? Or oh, no. I will talk, talk to, to me, you. Talk to me. Your son. Yes. And you're signing, of course. Yes. Right. 100 to 150 pounds is the the general estimation. Um, I think at the moment Karen has not got quite enough on the table, so I'm going to leave you with Karen. She's looking now, thinking. You're wasting your time. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say it is worth a little bit more, yes. but it is a gamble by going to the auction. Yes. Right, guys. I don't know if that's finito in yes, sign language, yes. <laughs> but that's what you're getting. Um, that is it, and I'm sticking on that £90. I don't like this little bit more business. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You sure you won't put any more? I won't put any more. No more. No more. We'll take it, yeah. Yeah? We will. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And we're shake. Yes. Thank you. Thank and well you. done, you. Yes. You're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that. Yeah. <laughs> ah, just a tenner less than what they were after. Hope they were happy with the deal. What do you reckon, fellas? That was the real deal. Over on Cheryl Hayton's Hello, table, Jane, Jane is Thank also Cheryl. hoping to cash in. And she's come prepared. Uh, bought in a money box. Ideally, I'd like... 30, 40 pounds. I watched Cheryl many times. She drives a hard bargain, but so do I. I absolutely love this money box. I am desperate to buy this. That's what we like to hear. Jane could be onto a winner. So, you have brought something along that I love. Good. Tell me how you came to own him. Um, it's from my, fa my husband's um, grandmother originally. Mother-in-law recently passed away, house clearance, came across it. Husband decided to keep it and it now sits on the shelf gathering dust in the dining room. OK, so do you like him? I think he's quirky and he's interesting. Not something that I would particularly have in my home at the moment. <laughs> But I certainly think he's got some sort of appeal. And do you know anything else about him, where he was made originally or how old he is? Um, other than he's uh, made of cast iron, I thought originally round about 1910, 1920 perhaps. I, I agree with you, definitely sort of turn of the century. Well, he's a money box, so shall we just have a quick demonstration? Put the coin there in his hand. And then we just press this handle and ching. Wow. <laughs> so it's quite it's quite funny, isn't it? In my father's antique shop, we had one of these next to the telephone. And anybody wanting to borrow the telephone had to put a coin. In. I never so, thought of that. So this brings back memories <laughs> for me because he was sat on my dad's desk and everyone was ordered to put the 10p in if they were going to use the phone. So this sort of takes me back. As you said, he's cast iron and that's the best quality. You do see these made of aluminium, they're a lot lighter and usually the paintwork isn't as good, it's tended to scratch and chip off. But he's got, he's got great paintwork, his lips here and the red of his coat is all in fairly good condition considering the age of him. And he, he's been used, he's a money box, that's Absolutely. what he's supposed to do. So once he's swallowed the coin, if we just tilt him up, you can undo the screws here and then empty him when he gets full. Well, I really like him. Good. And I'm going to try and buy him. I'm sure you've got an idea of how much you'd like. I do indeed. So, £20. No, I don't think so. £40. I'm getting warmer. Maybe I've been too enthusiastic. £50. I'm sure you can squeeze another one out. Squeeze another. You do like him, Cheryl. I know. I've I've played my it's cards. Got memories wrong. for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if I buy him, I'm probably not going to sell him. I'm going to end up keeping him as well. So there's no profit. Think of the money you're going to make by <laughs> phone calls and putting money in that mouth. <laughs> what if I took that away and then? Put that down. 
And I think that's a serious bid, Jane. Sure I can't squeeze another? I think, I think that's a good bid. I think it's a bit more than I intended to put down. So I'd like to offer you £60 for it. I'd be happy with that, Cheryl. We've got a deal? We've got Fantastic, a deal. Fantastic, Jane. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for Thank bringing you. him along. Oh, going away, very pleased. £60, twice what I wanted. Very happy. I know I've given too much money for this money box, but I don't care because I absolutely love it and I'm going to keep it. You're not going to make any money like that, Cheryl, unless you start charging your dad for the phone. <laughs> Coming up. I can't do it. it. When I'm in love with something... You're in love with that? I'm not. You are? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Come on, Mark, have a heart. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's time for Ian Towning to face Monica, who's bought in a classic lady's watch, and she knows exactly how much she wants. And I won't live without £400, so I hope uh, Ian will be nice and give it the price for me. Cartier, yes. steel, ladies. Yep. How did you get this watch? It was a present. A it was present. a gift a from gift? my ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Yeah. That's why it's going. That's yeah, why it's getting that's the why, chop. because now I have my husband. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the husband? Yeah. Did he insist it should go? <laughs> 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 OK. It's a very current model, you know, still made today. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long ago did you get it? About 10 years. 10 years. So you've had it 10 years. And yeah. you looked after it, I must say. You've hardly worn this watch. Several times only. Because it's in very good condition. There's no scratching on no, it and, no, no. and hardly any wear to it. So, you know. And it's still made. It's a very easy watch to wear. You know, mm -hmm. It doesn't look over the top. It's very simple, everyday watch. Quartz movement. And do you have box and papers? No, not no. really. Chuck them away? Yeah. With things like watches or any object or item, that has something that authenticates it, you know, can tell you this is what it is, this is real. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very important, you know, to have that information. So next one you buy, keep the box yeah. and papers. <laughs> By now I know. <laughs> so, I will make one offer on it, okay? Uh -huh. And that will be it, I'm afraid, okay? Uh, 50, 100, 150. To me, that's what it's worth. Uh, it's not mechanical. And really, I invest my money in mechanical watches. I don't put a lot of money into anything that's worth 100 million. This is your last? This is your last? Yeah. I need box and papers to sell the watch, to tell you honestly. And here comes David. <laughs> well, I've been listening carefully from the sidelines, and it it comes back to something that I believe in very strongly. When a retailer has to sell something, they like to have provenance of background information. So I don't think Ian is the buyer of this. We need to go to the auction. We have 354, uh, 350 to 500. It's in that range. Let them decide. Papers, box, whatever. Let the room make up its mind. But I do understand why our dealers are being hesitant. So there you go. You can see yeah, the point we have. Yeah, you know, for of us course. to sell it, it's very difficult. Okay? So let's take the uh, auction. To auction. Okay. And enjoy the Thank auction. Thank you anyway. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Watches, box, papers, very essential. All right, Ian, we hear you. But auctioneer Richard Winterton is much more confident. These are hot to trot at the moment, really keen. Now, had to go to auction, do far better. Well, they can't both be right. Monica can't make it today, so Chris, you're standing in for her. That's correct. Yeah. So, what's the relationship here with Monica? And uh, yourself? She's my sister in law. Okay, so she's your sister in law. She can't make it today. The watch is coming up now. There is a reserve of £350. Is it going to make that for a steel Cartier? I think that's ambitious. It's coming up now. Uh, the wristwatch there. Uh, bids are on the book and strong. We are straight in at 350. 
350, what 30, do I know? 350, 350, 360, 380, 400, 400 pounds, I'm bid at 400, room is out now, 400 with me. 400 bid, 400 bid, 400 bid, 400 pounds, all finished then. We are sold and selling at 400. Gavel's gone down at 400 pounds. I'm gobsmacked, I have to tell you. What about Ian, the jewellery dealer? He rated it 150 quid. Ian, you're miles out, mate. So we've got commission to take off. I make that 328 pounds. Brilliant. You're taking that back for Monica. Yep. Is she going to be pleased? Over the moon, over the moon. I totally underrated this. Taking home 328 quid. That's going to Monica, she'll be delighted. She certainly will, David. What a fabulous result. Now, the Duke has spotted something very special in the sale room. Today I found something which is just eye-popping and totally splendid. What we've got here is a lady's travelling case. And the veneer itself is Coromandel, uh, East Indian veneer, rare, expensive during the time this was made in the 1830s. Just look at the brass banding everywhere, the inlay on it. A great deal of attention to detail and quality has gone into this. Now, once I open it, just have a look inside. I mean, just have a look at that. Now, that just shouts quality at you. What you've got here would appear to be gold. It's actually silver gilt, gold laid on top of silver. Look at the engraving, the piercing. All the bottles are beautifully cut. They're all perfect. Inside these bottles here probably would be the colognes or perfumes. Absolutely perfect. And this here is the lady's necessaire for her nails and so forth. Uh, open this drawer and that's all beautifully fitted and padded. That's where a lady would keep her jewellery and watch and so forth. I mean, they lived in a totally different world. The estimation on this is four to five thousand pounds, which is very realistic. It's the Rolls-Royce example of its type. Quite superb. Just what every girl needs, and it's about to go under the hammer. 170, 648 we go to. Fantastic dressing box there. Bids are on the book. Starts the bidding at 38, 3,000. 3,800 is the opening bid. offer. 3,000, 4,000. 4,000 bid. 4,1, 4,2, 4,3, 4,003, 4,4. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4,005, 4, 4, I think it's no money for what it is. Rooms out, 4,005 and sold at 4,005. 4,500 pounds. All I can say to you is this, superb, it will be a long time before you see something as magnificent as that again. Oh, what a great lot. Back in the den, Nick has brought in a military watercolour for Mark Stevens. What do you think of this, Mark? There's something about it I really like, but I'm not sure how much money's going to go on the table. I'd like to see about 70 to 80 pounds for it, a minimum. Let battle commence. Well, you've brought me in a, a very unusual watercolour here. What can you tell me about the history? Uh, this is a First World War uh, painting, which I found in my loft. So it was just somebody had sold you the house and left this behind? Yeah. There's no other history you know about it, where it's come from, how it originated to be there? I do family history research, and when I found out who this was, yep. uh, I found that he was a captain in the First World War tank regiment. Right, OK. Right, what we've got here is the Royal Tank Corps. Now, the mm -hmm. Royal Tank Corps were formed in 1917, mm -hmm. and they basically went to become the Royal Tank Regiment with a very famous motto, which is Fear Naught. Mm -hmm. And um, this is dated 1929, yeah. And it's got a comical look of St George and the Dragon. Yeah. So the um, soldiers in the Mark I tank... <laughs> fighting the dragon. ..are fighting the dragon. Yeah. Um, but up here it's telling us it's for a driving display, um, which I presume must have been some type of competition they held. Possibly. Um, possibly. I mean, I quite like it. I think it's in good condition for its, it's age. It's in very good condition. Um, the frame's taken a few knocks, but... But it's not the frame we're selling, it's the It's painting. not the frame we're selling. You can always change the frame. We can change the frame, that's very true. But I think really there's only 
you know, possibly one thing to do is to, is to put some money on the table and see if we can kind of come to some agreement. Let's see what we got. 20? 40 pounds. No, not enough. Not enough. Hmm. Looking for a, looking for a... Obviously not made of gold, is it? Um, humorous subject matter. 50 to 80, 70 to 90. Opening bid of 40 pounds. I think it's worth a bit more than that. I, it's interesting and it's quirky and it's different. So somewhere on that 50 or 60, or maybe worth a gamble at auction. Yeah, I think David's got it absolutely spot on there. In my opinion, I looked at this and what would I want to gamble on? You know, have a little gamble, 50 quid. That's what I want to give. I don't want to give any more. So I'm going to put the other 10 pounds on the table, which is the 50 pounds. I'd like to see at least another one of those instead of. I really, I, I, I would. Like to see another one of those, yeah. I yes, know. when I've yeah, sold it. Yeah, there you go, yes. Yeah, but when I've sold it, no, so no, I have no, a little no. profit. No, no, you'll get profit. I'll, I'll change that for I, another one of those. That would be very nice. I can't do it. it. When I'm in love with something... You're in love with that? I'm not. You are? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I can't, honestly. £50 is where I want to be. I'm never hard. I've got to stick to my guns. I'm going to be rigid. And it's entirely up to you. You can do what you want, Nick. 50 pound notes now on the table. Do you know what? I'm going to take your 50 pound. Are you sure? Yeah, because at the end of the day, I didn't pay anything for it. And to go away with 50 pounds, I can go and have a nice meal on that. That sounds like the real deal to me. Thank you Thank very you much. Very much Thank you. Is there any profit? I don't think a lot, but I'm definitely going to sell it. If you say so, Mark, we'll find out later. After the break, a diamond ring has got Karen very excited. <laughs> well, get in there. Don't get too carried away now, Karen. Normally I'm saying to Karen, come on, darling, put a bit more money in. But Karen has got down too much. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Birmingham. Over on Karen's table, Deborah's brought in a diamond ring from Down Under, and she's got big plans for the money. I would like it to go towards a holiday for my husband and myself. Show him Australia, show him the sights here. Hope you've got deep pockets, Karen. Debbie, Hi. nice to meet you. What have you I bought? What I bought a gold and diamond ring that was my mother's, and then she passed it on to me yeah. from Australia. Yeah. I, and I noticed a slight twang yes, yes, there. You've yes. been there yourself. Haven't yes, you? I lived there for 30 years. So, at what stage did this arrive at your, in your family? Um, well, my mother gave it to me about 10 years ago. You got it from Australia. OK, yeah. so are we dating it to about the 50s, somewhere around there? I would say possibly about, maybe about, about the year. About the 50s, yeah. so let's have a little look. It, it's quite a nice little ring, actually. We've got a single diamond here, and coming down the shoulders on each side, We've got some tiny little diamond chips, haven't we? Yeah. But what's quite sweet is, is the shape of the diamond itself. It's almost in the shape of a teardrop, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's quite unusual. So have you worn it very much? No, because unfortunately it's a bit too small for my fingers and also the stone being so large, I wouldn't be able to wear it every day at work and make it worthwhile to be worried about damaging it. So I thought, yeah. you know, I might as well see if I can try and get some money for it, something like that worthwhile, because yeah. it's no point keeping it at home. OK, like let's have a closer look. Because a diamond isn't just a diamond. There's so much history within it, and you have to look within the yeah. stone to see the occlusions, the colours, and all nice sorts cut. of things like that, yeah. OK. I do with a bit of a clean, I have to say. <laughs> it's quite nice. The, the diamonds on the shoulder are very, very tiny. And I'm just having a look at the band, the shank, and it's on 18 karat. And generally speaking, if, if a stone's worth its muster, it will be put on 18 karat right, gold. Yeah. So that all ties in nicely. And I think it's quite a nice ring. So for me, I'd like to offer you a price that's going to tempt you, because it is something right. that I quite would like to buy. So let's get going, shall we? 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, £300 I'd like to offer you. And I bet you're really impressed with that, aren't you? I'm quite impressed with that. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> but get in there. Mm. Maybe a purple one? 
to match the tablecloth? To match the tablecloth. <laughs> well, I have it. Just for your cheek, I'll give you that. And I like that one, right? So you've got 320 on the table. Well, it just happens that I looked at this ring from a distance and went back to my independent valuers because the estimation they had, I thought, well, that's a bit on the low side. They had about 180 to 220 on it, and Karen has got down... 320. Too much. Well, I don't th <laughs> to be honest with you, Karen, I don't think so, because what I think you've got here, you've got a very nice heart-shaped stone, very fashionable, but I have to say... I think the price that's on the table is a fair and honest price. Normally I'm saying to Karen, come on, darling, put a bit more money in, but she put a good price on there. Yeah. I'm going to say that's worth taking. So, bearing in mind what David just say, happy with that money? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Fantastic. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Well. Thank you. This one's a damn good clean. Give it to me, Daddy. He sticks it in the gin. That's how we do it. <laughs> Most of us prefer it with ice and a slice, Karen. But whatever floats your boat. <laughs> On Cheryl's table, Robert has brought in a royal Worcester vase he inherited from his brother. How much do you want for it? No, I hope you can get at least £100, at least. I'm probably looking around £80 for this. Best barter a bit here, Bob. So you've brought along a piece of Royal Worcester. That's correct, yes, yes. So do you like Royal Worcester? Yes, Is it well, your I, taste? I like it. I like it. Oh yeah, I like it very much. In the factory shut down, you see they make, make uh, these You've got items. Good taste yeah. then, Robert. Always yeah. a quality item, Royal yeah. Worcester. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you any other pieces of Royal Worcester or just, uh, just this one? No, no, I've got a uh, number of figurines as okay. well, yes, of my brother. So you're a bit of a collector then? Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So your piece of Royal Worcester here yeah. is the roses pattern. Yeah. It's unfortunately not signed, which is quite unusual. Oh, yeah. But yeah. all hand-painted here. Yeah. The yeah. quality is fantastic. Yeah. And you've got this gold leaf yeah. around the top yeah. here. Yeah. And what's important about Royal Worcester and any good quality porcelain is the condition. Yeah. So the painting is in fantastic condition, there's no scratches. Yeah. This is how the collectors like them. Oh, yeah. And yeah. if we turn it upside down, yeah. there's its number. Yeah. So we've got 2510. Yeah. Now you can look that up in a Royal Worcester oh, book and yeah. it will tell you exactly the year it was made, oh, yeah. just by the pattern number. Oh, yeah. Probably dated around 1900, 1910, yeah. Yeah. and the factory not too far yeah. from no. where we are today, no, no. but Perhaps. very yeah. well known yeah. in this area. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put some cash oh, down, yeah. Yeah. try yeah. and buy this from yeah. you. Yeah. I'm sure you've got an idea of what you would like. Yeah, enough, yes, yes, yes. 20, yeah. 40 pounds. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. OK. £60. Pounds. No, thank you. No. no. More? More. <laughs> £80. Pounds. What do you think to that? No, I think, I think it might be worth more. I think it's worth more. more. OK. 80 to 120 is the estimation. Yeah. If it was me, I wouldn't gamble on that particular specimen in the auction. Mm. I would take the 80. But you, you can go to the auction and I'd be delighted to take you there. But with Worcester at the moment, it is weak unless it is something whiz-bang. Mm. And unfortunately, that is not one of those pieces. Mm. Mm. What do you think? Would you like to take the 80 or would you like to go to auction? It's up to you. No, I think I'll accept your offer. You're going to accept the offer, so we have a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. I feel I gave Robert a really good price. It was a little more than I intended to give, so fingers crossed I sell it. Good luck with that one, Cheryl. After the break, Ian gets down to business. Well, let's talk, man. <laughs> That's what we've come for. <laughs> but just how much cash will he have to part with? <laughs> you want all of this, don't you? No, you I'm want a lot of drinks. I won't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Hi, Mark. It's time for some boys' toys, as seller Mark has brought in his childhood collection of minic vehicles by the famous British manufacturer Triang. But Mark Stevens is feeling a little out of his depth. 
I'm in 30 foot of water here because I haven't got a clue what these are worth. Good job our seller is clued up then. I want 200 pounds of them. I'm going to have a poker face and I'm going to get as much money as I can out of Mark. Uh-oh, you could be in for a bumpy ride, Mr Stevens. Well, you've brought me in a selection of toys here, tin plate toys, mainly cars and vans, but with one train. Yeah. What can you tell me about? Um, they belong to my uncle. When he, he used to play with them when he was younger, then they were passed down to me. Right, OK. From first look, I think they're kind of 1930s to 1950s. Um, there's a great little lot here. I mean, you've got the BP, you've got the, the American taxi, the ambulance, Minic transport. That's also Minic. Yes, uh, most oh. of these are Minic ones. Right. They're all made basically by the same company. Yes, yeah. so you've got a couple of German ones as well. well so. Are they shoe shorts? Yes. I thought they might have been, yeah. Um, I mean, these have got like a bit of nostalgia to them, a bit of history. Why do you want to sell them? I just haven't got the room to put them on show and they're just, they're just being stuck up in the roof, so I'd like to see someone else enjoy them. Well, well, really, Mark, you know, I'm just going to put a little bit of money on the table and you can say yes or no, thank you very much, and see how we go. 20, 40, 60 pounds. Mark, I don't really want to go anymore. I've put 60 pounds on the table. I don't know really where I would sell them. I'd probably auction them. But it's your decision. It's entirely up to you, Mark. I mean, what would you like to do? I'll, I'll take them to auction. I wish you the best of luck and I hope you do very well there. Thank, Thank you very much. much. And I'm really happy Mark has taken them to auction because I think he'd do a lot better there. And that's exactly what auctioneer Richard Winterton is hoping for. Uh, one or two rare ones, I think, in that lot. That's why we've gone two to 300, because there's one or two in there, which I think will fly. 70. But how high? 200 pounds. Well, they're coming up now. The reserve is 220 pounds. They are collectible. Has the reserve been pitched on the mark? We're about to find out. They're coming up now. Commission bids, book bid, 150, 150, 150, I'm bid at 150, 160, Starting 150, 160, 170, 180. 190, 190, 190, 200, 200 pound, I'm bid at 200. At 200, the reserve is 220. I'm bid at 200, 220, at 200 pounds, 200. Not sold, David. Not sold. Disappointed? No, not really. I can always put them in another auction. That's well, they can go in another yes. auction. But in the meantime, Mark, I suggest take them home, get them out, have a play around with them, and perhaps another day, another sale room, and they will fly away. Better look next time, Mark. Back in the den, Desmond and Elaine have brought in an ivory brooch for Ian. And they've come to the right table. I like him very much because, well, he's lovely. And not only that, I know if it gives me what I want. I'd like 350 for it. I do hope that I'm going to fall in love with it and buy it. That is the idea. Very pretty brooch over here. Yes. Ivory, very beautifully carved. Yes. And how long have you had the brooch? Well, it belonged to my grandmother and she was left it to her when she was in service. Wow. And the house where she worked is in Wollstone still, because still it, belong, it belonged to a vicar's wife. And what makes you want to sell it? Well, it's been in the cupboard ever since probably my grand passed away and since I've had it. So you've never, ever worn it? No. no. And I don't think my daughter's interested. No? No, and I've got a granddaughter. It'd probably suit you more. <laughs> it suit me more? Why has it got diamonds in it <laughs> that I can't see? <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, that's very sad, you know, it's such a lovely piece, you know. And when you look at it, the amount of detail, the amount of work in yes. this piece, you know, it's mid-19th century, um, probably carved, I would imagine, in Italy. Italy? Yeah. You know, Italian. Um, the detail is phenomenal. You know, the cherub in the middle is absolutely is, yeah. child, beautiful. The shell work, the flowers, I mean, cannot fault it. And to think it's still in perfect condition. Yes, yes. You know, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. You're on a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so, anyway. 
I can't believe you're selling it, but I'm glad you are. <laughs> well. I just hope I can afford to buy it. Yeah. Well, that's the point. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk money. That's right. That's what we've come for. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> but not all of them. Yeah, not all Okay. 50, 100. 150, 200, 250, 300. Now he's getting greedy. No, no, I'm not getting greedy. You know it's worth more than that. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> How much more do you think it's worth? Well, you keep putting it down and we'll tell you. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> you want all of this, don't you? Well, well, you I want a lot of I drinks. I no. <laughs> <laughs> you would never choose and say no. Now, Elaine and Des, I've just been running frantically round to my independent values in the auctioneer. It's not often we disagree. Now, the estimate on this is 250 to 350. I totally disagree with that. I rate this highly. I think the work on it is absolutely superb. And I think the 250 to 350 was a very, very conservative estimate. Well, now, I'm going to say we haven't finished. Ian also rates it and he might want to put more money on it. So I'm going to go away to the sidelines. I'm going to watch Fancy Pants here <laughs> because one thing is he knows quality. He can be a bit hard with his purse. But he knows quality, and I think he's going to try and buy this, but I'm going to make him pay. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. You, well, pay you, for, have... you pay for what you get. Do we know? <laughs> <laughs> get you. <laughs> so, 350. And one more, and then you come. He's greedy. Yeah, no, not no, greedy. No, I'm the same. Don't you agree with yeah, him? You have to be so. backing me. It's not yeah, greedy. No. You, it's your you, you've yeah. said it yourself. You can't fault it. No. It's 100 percent perfect. Yeah. Quality, mm -hmm. age, everything is with it. What can I say? There's 400. Are you happy with the 400? It's more than the estimates. Just a tenner for a drink. Sorry? Just a tenner for a drink. You got 400 there for a drink. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't got nothing, it's the wife's. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see that. There's money bags. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think it's a very fair offer. Yeah. OK. She's made the decision for you. Yes. yes. So shall we shake on it? Very thank good. you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Fantastic yeah, view. Thank Fantastic. You. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. Ian's got the bargain of today. He knows that. And Elaine's got the money. 400. What an amazing deal. Nothing gave me more pleasure than parting with my money to get such a lovely piece of jewellery. And Desmond and Elaine got 50 quid more than they'd hoped for, so it smiles all round. <laughs> but is it the dealers or our savvy sellers who've come out on top today? <laughs> Karen was pushed to pay £90 for Andrew and Geoffrey's silver snuff box. No, no. I take I'm it that's a no inside, <laughs> is yes, it? Yes, <laughs> no. Nah. And she could only send it on for the same amount. She got a bit carried away with Deborah's diamond ring. <laughs> paying 320 My independent value is they had about 180 to 220 on it, and Karen has got down... Too much. Well, I don't... Afraid so, Karen. Unsurprisingly, she's not sold it on. Mark battled with Nick, eventually coughing up £50 for his military watercolour. When I'm in love with something... You're in love with that? I'm not. You are? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> if I can earn £10 on it, I'd be delighted. But guess what? He's not made a penny either. Cheryl played right into Jane's hands for her novelty no, money box. Press this handle. You do like him, Cheryl. I know. I've played my He's cards. He's got memories for wrong. you. <laughs> and at sixty pounds, she paid well over the odds. But I don't care because I absolutely love it, and I'm going to keep it. And that she did. No profit there either. Robert squeezed eighty pounds out of Cheryl for his Royal Worcester vase. More? More. Maybe. But maybe. hip hip hooray, we have our first profit of the day. 
a whole five pounds. <laughs> so, can Ian save the day for our dealers? It wasn't looking good as Desmond and Elaine made him pay over the valuation for the ivory brooch. That's the 400. How much more do you think it's worth? Well, you keep putting it down and we'll tell you. <laughs> Perhaps they should have held out for more as crafty old Ian sold it the very next day for 600 pounds. Still, that doesn't come close to the whopping £1,328 our sellers took home today. <laughs> Never mind, dealers. You can't win them all. <laughs> Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.